So right, here we are in Octane and let's see if we can progress this project a bit and get it to look more like uh, the scene we had in Bryce. Uh, to that end, I'm going to introduce another node here and it's called a render target. And it's got a series of inputs that are compatible with other nodes, the color coded. And this hollow input here accepts the geometry group output or in fact any of these um, geometry output. So if I just link those two together and then click on this render target mode you'll notice that we've we've lost our camera position and the reason for that is that this has got its own camera position settings and you can have multiple render targets and then just keep plugging your group in or selecting the different render targets with the groups plugged in to get different views and this render target comes with its own render kernel and there are three kernels in Octane. It was like a direct lighting one that's used for preview, which is this preview configuration, which I have briefly s mentioned in the last video. And there's other ones you can plug in. There's like a, the default one that you get with the render target that I think is pathfinding, which is like Bryce's uh, true ambience method. But running through the GPU um, tends to be a bit quicker. Here we go. That's where the kernel is there. But you can just add your own kernel into the input for that, which is this sort of this grey colour, which means you can control exactly what's going on there without having to dip into this menu. So we'll just add a node and we'll add a kernel. We'll use path tracing again. So you can see it's got this hollow output. We can now plug that into the kernel there. And then when I've got this block selected, I can go to the max samples here and turn them down, as I did before, so it doesn't keep thrashing my graphics card to death. So, um, what are the considerations we've got here? Getting the camera position set up. So if I reconnect the geometry group there, you can see my camera position set up, uh, the, the pole that I used to align it, and then make sure I've got render target selected, and then I move it up. It was interfering with the ground there. And then use this little control here that allows me to select. And I think when I roll the mouse forward, that's actually bringing the camera forward. I'm not that familiar with what goes on here, but here we go. I'll try and explain. I'll deselect that control now and I can move my camera around. Whoops, I seem to have ended up through the ground. So wh what's happened to my... Where's that pole gone? I'm, I can't... I must have hit the ground instead of the top of the pole there. So I'll try again. Select my targeting thing, see if I can get the top of that pole. And then when I zoom in it'll mean that the, the thing's got out of pro focus because it's got an automatic depth of field effect focus thing going. So I've now roll my camera around. Obviously this is going to interfere. So if I just deselect that from the group, that'll get rid of that. And now it's manages to focus in on the object again. So I'm back now in the position I was here, but with the render target. A bit long-winded. Now, the render target's got these uh, camera controls straight away. You can plug a camera into that control there, but um, I've never really experimented with that yet. So I've just been playing around with the controls that appear within the render target. And so I'm going to widen the field of view so that it's more like what we had with Bryce. So, and then uh, if I hold the left mouse button and uh, hold, hold it down, it allows me to sort of move the camera around on its tripod. That's like the, the rollerball control in Bryce, so that's like this control, uh, which, is, uh, which is handy. Now, I've got this material to sort out. I've not got the water material to sort out. That's going to know that's going to be quite tricky and the sky which is potentially going to be easier. So there's another plugin on this render target which is environment and so if I right click here and add a node uh, there's two sorts of environments available in this menu. Uh, I'll start with daylight environment because that's quite fun. So there's my daylight environment and I've just plug it into that little control there and then there's this little map that allows me to move the sun round in this scene. So that's that's pretty neat. That's not what I intended to use, but I just I just really like that. Okay, uh, I'll just delete that block, and I'm going to bring in the other environment, which is this texture environment, and I'll plug that in. Uh, at the moment, the texture environment, if I select that block, is just providing sort of like a white output. But if I click on this name here, it'll allow me to select image, and then I can bring in the HDRI image that I exported from Bryce, and what I have discovered is that you need to correct the rotation uh, at, at minus 0.25 places the well, essentially a HDRI image in the same position as it did 
relative to your Bryce scene. So it's just a little bit of an orientation correction, presumably at the point with which it's uh, converting. So anyway, not to worry about that too much. We've got some controls in here that we can use to increase the output from our image. Now, I don't really know what power relates to in terms of what you get from Bryce, and I also don't know how much of what you've set up in Bryce gets exported with return in terms of the sky settings. I've not done any tests on that at all. So this is just as it's come in. But as you can see, let's go back to our render target and widen the field of view a little bit more. So you can see a bit more of this sky. This is only the, the sort of low to medium resolution sky day on HDRI that uh, Horror provides with the Islands 2 product. There is a high resolution version, uh, but memory for the in Octane uh, is on the graphics card. So uh, I don't think there's any slowing down problems in, in, in the interface. I've never even built a scene complex enough to find that out. Uh, it soon turns into a bit of a rat's nest down here. I'm not really sorted out how you're supposed to arrange things so it doesn't turn into like just an explosion in a wire box with all these links and things. So there's, a, there's ways of producing macros and creating more tabs. And presumably I'll get to grips with that at some point, but that's a bit outside of the scope of the problems I'm trying to solve at the moment. We don't have a sun in this as such and I don't know how to mix the two environment modes or even if that's possible so I might have to bring in an object create an object in the Bryce sky to act as the sun because at the moment all I've got is sort of ambient lighting from the HDRI there's no predominant light source in this sky dome so uh, something I might consider doing and there's also the material problem to solve and I'm not sure. I, I did say I was going to be solving the material problem in this tutorial, so I suppose I better stick with that and go back to the lighting problem later. So I've got uh, PaintShop Pro here, and I've got where what I've been working on. So um, using either the exporter from Bryce or the Studio, it starts producing these little folders with maps and converted maps in. And the thing about Octane is with a with a Bryce scene, a particularly brilliant aspect of it is that everything you need to render the scene is saved in the scene file. The less brilliant aspect of that solution is that everything you need to render the scene is saved in the scene file, which means the scene file gets absolutely massive and potentially unwieldy and can cause problems. But in Octane, you've got your your, your render file here, and this is tiny. This is a tiny file. Look at that. <laughs> 110 kilobytes. Look at my Bryce scene. You know, we're getting to megabytes quite easily, even on something fairly simple. That's just saving, that's just with the lattice in that saved. That's not even the scene with all the other bits in. But it means that when you're making an Octane scene, it's really easy to lose track of different components. And so you have to make sure that you've when you've picked out HDRIs and you've got these maps and things that it might be referring to, they all need to be bundled together with the Octane scene. And you've made to put the whole thing in one folder to save it. Otherwise, when you come back to it a bit later, you might have lost track of the components. Anyway, that's a slight digression. What I was going to do is let's have a look at these uh, maps that we've got. So there's some maps here, so and there's a map here, and that's going to be what we're going to look at. So. I'm going to need to make one of these maps from Bryce at high resolution instead of exporting it. Now, because of the way that the the mapping appears to be working in Octane, it's, it's applying these maps to each side, so it's done some kind of UV mapping conversion. We need to get that kind of map, or, or half that map, because we could probably just copy it to the other side because we can't see it, out of Bryce. So if I do half, that would make it square, and I need it to be in this orientation, which looks to be about 90 degrees out from horizontal so let's uh, let's rotate that image let's see rotate it uh, I want counterclockwise 90 degrees is that about level I'm not even sure that's about level uh, it might be level relating to something on the rotated object so this is a bit of a tricky problem to solve really I want a flat render of a face and I need it to be sort of at that angle and at the right scale so that I can put it into this sort of position of the original file which was that way around so it's going to be that way around at high resolution that I can then use as a material map for Octane. Now that is starting to sound like it's going to be a bit of a headache but well, I did say I was going to try and solve these problems so let's get on and try and solve them. So what I've done here is I've reloaded my scene and what you're watching is a speeded up video of me 
doing a bit of an experiment which I think turned out to be a bad idea so I've just created it the setup so it's rendering the material through the ambient channel and now I'm trying to figure out where I should put my camera and how I should orientate the object so I can capture the material as it appears in the UV maps which were generated by the export function so I've used copy matrix to place the camera roughly within the object but it doesn't really respect all your orientations I need so I had to reverse a few of the figures and reposition it to the exact origin of the object to get it lined up and even then the X values out of rotation so I need to correct that by setting it negative and then I can use object space to wind it back along the axis in line with the shape and my idea is then to capture that shape at a higher resolution and put that into the UV map instead of the low resolution UV map that was generated by export so I've created a cube that I'm now going to position over the camera so I can get a perfectly orthogonal view by turning the cube into a lens but unfortunately the copy matrix didn't manage to put the cube at the origin of the camera either so I've got to do that m by manually repositioning it which is a bit of a tedious process and then I'm going to have to set it to perfectly as a square object and then scale it so it's an appropriate size to capture the lattice which is isn't got to be done by guesswork because I'm working at odd angles and so that's the next thing is to make sure my field of view because I've got my aspect ratio square is correct to capture the exact side of one cube and then I get my orthogonal view and then scale the cube up bit by bit so I've just got the object in the scene and then I can capture that render and bring it into PaintShop Pro and then see if I can get it to align uh, as I discover it doesn't align I mean at first I think it's just a matter of flipping it and rotating it slightly uh, but hmm, that's not so clever so I, I use the uh, the uh, ability to set it sort of semi-transparent and then start trying to line it up over this low resolution image and you can see I've had to rotate it slightly and scale it a bit to try and line it up with the UV map and any misalignment on that UV map is likely to result in a black edge around the outside which would be difficult and I'd have to paint around the entire thing and it's all together becoming far too fiddly but I'm still pressing on with it to see how far I can go with it but I'm not really happy because uh, if they have to do this for every object in the scene it's going to be a really annoying trying to get any of the materials out so I've started with a high resolution map to copy over and then I'm just positioning it as I did before using the transparency settings and rotation rotation to to get it over the top which as you can see is not the easiest to process us because we're doing it four times faster right now and then I'm going to copy one side over the other and save that and then bring it into octane you can see the resolution go up a bit but I really think that this is a dead end approach because when I started out with this scene I had no intention of converting this scene to Octane I just picked this scene out as an experiment so I've made life difficult for myself so it's a good test but I've made life too difficult myself really because I could have aligned this uh, lattice into a position where it was easy to pick the material off in Bryce and I wouldn't have this problem but by doing it this way it's made it nearly impossible to get it uh, perfectly aligned so here I am in Octane just loading in the higher resolution map that I've just created and it does sort of work but I've concluded that this isn't the way to go so I've had an idea I'm going to try a different approach now and uh, and we'll go back to normal speed right so okay that was a bit of a wild goose chase but <coughs> you've got to investigate these things and see what's happening let us see then because I've already exported the geometry but if I take this lattice and export it so file export object and we'll call this island maps and do it on the object format I just want the, the the maps from the material I don't know if it's going to be modified by having either high or low resolution so if I use no polygons can I still get maps out of it and what size maps and how long is it going to take to render so let's render them out at a reasonable resolution and see what happens so even though there are no polygons in this output I'm going to try oh look at that it's really going to crawl so hopefully this is going to produce my material maps that I can then just bring into Octane and that's going to sort the resolution problem out and we'll see whether the bump map is going to work which I don't know that'll give me a chance to look at the 
way that Octane Material works. I've reset to the scene before I did the few changes in the speeded up section, so we'll have another go at that. And uh, and what what I got here is this is the block that's the uh, lattice. And if I look in this uh, what do you call this? this list on the left hand side I can I can open it out and get the material and copy the material from the us which is associated with that blob there and then if I paste after copying I can bring that uh, as a material block and then I can work on that block itself I can see that I've got this image map and this one that's driving the bump and there's like on this preview here so th at the moment though the bump is far too coarse if I could get normal maps out of Bryce, that'd be great. But I don't know that I can figure that out. I've tried to do it by using a trick with the uh, with one of the converting bump to colours, which seems to use some kind of normal mapping. Uh, but I, I've not been able to translate it into an image yet. So so we're just going to have to use bump map at the moment until I figure something out there. It might do. I don't know if we can get high enough resolution. Let's see what the progress Bryce is making. Okay, right. I'm going to pause the video here, and we'll we'll have a look at this, what it produces when it's finished uh, finished this export. And by pr putting it out at at naught polygons, the object itself is is going to not have any facets really. So we'll definitely know whether it's just treating the lattice and converting the material from the lattice, and then that's getting translated via the UV mapping onto the geometry. And then we'll see if that UV map will map using the other map of the object that we've already got in Octane, if you see what I mean, which possibly you don't, because I've explained it really badly, sorry. Right, pause in the video. Okay, right, well, Bryce got through that without crashing, and it's created uh, another couple of files for us, and uh, these are the high-resolution ones just here. Those are the low-resolution ones we had just before. So if I go to the materials now, uh, I can bring in the high-resolution ones if I can navigate to them. So that's that one, that's the bump map with the higher resolution. So that's our bump map one. And then I'll load in our one from for the for the colour channel, which uh, is that one I think. So that's okay. So that should be nice. High resolution now, give me a fine bump pattern for this. Although I'm not convinced that's the right bump map for this material. It doesn't look quite right, does it? Because I'd expect to see anyway, we'll see how it looks in the the thing in the render, and all I can't really see very much there because there's not much light on this. So that should have provided us with a higher resolution. Yes, it does look higher resolution on this on this preview. So obviously the 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 resolution of the images used in the render uh, is not dependent on the resolution of the lattice on export. So I've been able to export the lattice separately from the images and in this case this probably was the best way of doing it. I uh, can't really save the camera position like you can in Bryce. What you can do is uh, control C and control V the render target there and then I can have one that I can move around separately. So if I retarget this on the object somewhere and then I can I can move it around and we can see oh dear that doesn't look very promising does it? Look at that that doesn't line up at all down that edge which is what worried me last time when I was looking at it, it didn't look like it was lining up so hmm, I don't know what's going on there and the inside here that looks very dark I wouldn't have expected it to be that dark so that means it's picking up the black so it's still not really got a solution on that front now the question is is that because I exported the mesh uh, separately with with its with its image okay um, I might have to try and export the mesh and the image together and see if it fixes that problem or whether that's just a problem with Bryce that we've got to work around. So, okay, let's do another export test. So we'll export object and we'll call this island object complete. So this is going to take a while because it's going to have to export the material as we just have done. So we'll do it at the same resolution and the geometry. Uh, and we'll do it again at, uh, at about 200,000 and it's going to give us diffuse color and bump on the output channels then and it should give it a new name as well and obviously that's going to take a while so I'll pause the video again okay the exports completed now if I bring it in and it's this one that says complete it's not going to appear in the right place 
when it's loaded in, but it should have its right materials. So let's link that to the group, and it's probably it's going to be massive, isn't it? Because after last time, hello, where's it got to? I'm not. So, oh, I don't even see anything there unless it's gone in the wrong place. Something appears to have gone a bit wrong. I'll just check that Bryce finished exporting it. Hmm. I might have created the files, but it might not have finished exporting it. Let's see. That menu's still there. Now, I don't know if that's Camtasia or not. Let's it could still be writing the object file, which it's easy to get caught out like that. I've done it myself several times. You see the files appear, and you think they're ready, but uh, this file's, <laughs> ironically, not complete, even though it's called complete. So I've got to wait for this to complete its writing faces. So I'll pause again. Okay, it appears to have been done. It wasn't very clear when it finished. I think probably Camtasia just kept the menu hanging around. So let's import the object. So that's this one complete. And that's uh, just loading in there. And then now it doesn't appear to have any materials with it. So somehow its material linkings uh, failed. Let's get it with the group. And you can see that it's at a radically different scale to the one that came in through DS as covered last time. Let's get the material for it. Well, I, I got this material here, so if I plug that material in there, oh, we've still got the same problem, but now I'll, I'll load the other maps that have been generated and see if they vary in any way or whether they're exactly the same. So if I load this new map from the complete one, which is going to look like what? Um, well, it'll be the same size, but it'll be a newer file. So I'll have to check the dates. So I'm not quite sure. Oh, that's that one there. It says it's complete in the name. So open that. Didn't look very different to me. I'll load this one. Open that. Right, go back to this. I'm still seeing the same problem as I have with this other one. It's this area which is clipping the entire edge is creating a line and it's not lining up for some reason in the way that it's captured the material. It's, uh, is out. Hmm. So, what is the answer to that? What sort of mapping's been used there? It's obviously taken the p material mapping and created a 2D surface from it, so possibly I need to make sure that there's no Z value in the material. I'll have to test that and we'll come back to it. But uh, obviously, we're not near to solving this problem just yet. So, I think that's enough for one video. I'm going to have to realign the camera. I have got the sky. I have not solved the material problems. So, further research is required. Okay, quick thought, quick experiment before I'm done here. Let's get rid of this uh, that one there. What happens... I'm just thinking about the Z direction, because I think what's happening is that when the two sides of this lattice are captured, it, it's, the material is, exists in three-dimensional space. So it's got this these um, procedurals that are sleeting, uh, I don't know, pass. If you imagine things passing through three-dimensional space and the, the lattice is like a sli surface slicing through this, this sort of like, it looks blue cheese patterns, you know, as you slice through blue cheese you see patterns. Uh, maybe that's just me, I'm interested in cheese. I'm interested in eating cheese, not making it. Anyway, if I can get rid of the Z factor, so if I go to uh, uh, Object Space, Attributes, and flatten the shape completely, and then uh, export the object, so we'll call this Island Flat, and then well, we don't need any polygons, we'll just we'll, we'll export at the high resolution, so I'll have to pause the video again while it thinks about that. See whether the maps are modified by being flattened. And if they are, by making the Z direction zero, it might be possible to get the edges to line up again because it won't it won't be moving through any Z and the maps are flat and they're being wrapped around a 3D object. But I don't think the the maps are actually I think they only relate to a plane on the 3D object. I don't think they're truly 3D mapped up with the mesh, because I've already shown that you can produce the maps without any kind of mesh output or with different resolutions of mesh output and it doesn't seem to affect the maps, at least as far as I've been able to tell by looking at them. I could put, take them into PaintShop Pro and subtract one from another, which I suppose while we're waiting we can have a go at just as a test. So, 
I'll just get rid of these things. Get rid of that. Okay, and I'll bring in the one of the maps, one of the high resolution maps. So this is a complete map. So I'll just bring that in here, and then I'll bring one in that was generated independently of the uh, the geometry. That was that one there. I'll copy that one and then paste it over the top of the other one. So uh, no, it didn't get out of it for some reason. I think because I'm rendering in the background, it's slowing the uh, slowing the whole thing down. That map and that map they are different maps. Control cancel cancel control C oh, I can't copy it because I've got not enough memory <sighs> yeah that's inconvenient so I have to copy these I need to generate these maps at a lower resolution why are they taking up so much memory I wonder if I, I've made PaintShop Pro large address aware there is a video on my channel about large address aware uh, it's a useful little program so I'll just see whether I've got it turned on for PaintShop Pro and then we might be able to compare these larger files or I'll have already done it and it won't work so let's see uh, so that's one that's the other control C not enough memory closed more documents huh? about file okay image resize let's see if we resize this smaller image resize that one smaller there you can't complain now control C and then control L and then I'll just do the difference between these and they completely annihilate one another which means that they're essentially the same which sort of answers the question uh, as I suspected the the maps are generated independently from the geometry which means we're nearly done generating our new set of maps hopefully these are going to look different and when I load these it'll solve the problem about it going around the edge but probably the problem with the black bit in the middle I'm going to have to find another way of doing that so we're nearly there with this I'll just, I can see the window here where I'm doing my experiments hopefully they'll pop up there and there ready for loading into Octane so let's fight Octane up and they're called flat so right there's my material there loading button look for the ones called flat um, island 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 no it, it saves the di a different name doesn't it it doesn't call them that it just exported the lattice it comes out with its own names so I'm gonna have to find the, the latest file to work out which one it is because they all look the same now which is a little bit of a problem there so if I produce a list and do it by date then the latest ones here and well, they are called flat why couldn't I see them before then well I don't suppose it matters it's just because they're so long I missed them that's the trouble with being dyslexic you can't see things like that so that's my bump map there so I'll load that one in and then I'll load in my image here which is a color image and then we'll have a look whether we get joining up on the lattice around the outside edge if I use this targeting method there that puts it on there let's see okay well that's looking like a sort of solution for that problem of the lattice but we've still got this black area in the middle well while I was tinkering I thought maybe there'd be an answer to this just by processing the image so if I pick it out of this list again I can't see it in this list um, do, it, I have to do it by order so I'm looking on the other monitor now and I just can't I can't read it in the names which is really annoying I'll just go by date modified again okay that's picked it out there's this one uh, the bump map probably not going to be such a problem with the, the black area in the middle so we'll just do the color one you can do the same thing for the other one right if I've got that and I'll create a new layer I want a, I want this to be transparent so I could if I export that as a PNG so if, save that save copy as and go for PNG and then go into options and run optimizer and then choose a transparency color areas that match this color and that's black so that's turned out okay so hopefully it'll process this it takes a little time but make black fully transparent oh I want a single color transparency 
it's just thinking about it now there we go so that I go OK and then it should give me a dialogue when it's finished thinking about that and then we go oh, transparency that gives me a PNG with a the transparency there which you can now load in so I've got that layer with the transparency on and then I take this one and I'll go uh, image effects edge effects and then I'll dilate the edges that'll make the edges grow uh, effects edge effects where are you edge effects I'll dilate them again that'll make the edges grow again I don't know how big effects effects dilate the edges so hopefully it'll be creeping over the black area so I've done that three times and I'll copy that one and it's let me do it and and paste it as a new layer and then hopefully that will there'll be the high resolution bit and a bit of an edge and then I'll save that uh, save copy as and we'll just call that processed map yes and then go back into octane and I'll load in that one but it's the last one on the list now because I'm doing it uh, I've got got to come a long way in before I can get into that dark area there look at that I want to get all the way into that dark area and that that bit is the bit where I've expanded it so I could really do with this pattern filling in all the way you know I've had another idea <laughs> you're gonna be really bored with this video now aren't you okay I did point out it was an experiment uh, right if uh, if I just go back to this and, and stop messing around with with the geometry because who said the geometry was pointless anyway we'll just render the whole lot that'll fill the hole in no problem I've got it flat so it'll wrap around at the edges so file uh, export object we'll just go uh, this is it and make sure I've got my uh, resolution set set the geometry to nothing or four it's insisting on and then I'll export that and pause the video okay that's that done and uh, fingers crossed we're nearly there with this one and we'll have solved one problem so these are the maps down here that this has generated and you see there's no black on these there's no black hole there's no black outside which and hopefully they're going to join up as well because they look almost identical well, so that means they'll sort of mirror the lattice but the lattice joins always a problem anyway and we've got a bump map for this too so in octane right we'll load these in and see if that solves our problem so what was that one called oh, maybe I can pick it out pick it out with this card because it looks significantly different so that's that one and then I'm gonna use this no nope, I'm gonna load that in there and load the bump map in that's that and then we we'll switch to the render target and we'll get down and have a closer look at this I'll link it onto the target We'll worry about the camera in the next one but there you go that looks like if I increase the output from my um, lighting here so I'll just increase this power value you can see that we've not got any obvious disjoint it's just a mirror at the, the half where the two halves join and there's no large dark area in the middle so hooray victory for sorting the material out on this uh, on this lattice and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get in there we've got we've got bump settings so we might try winding the bump setting up and that kind of thing let's see the gamma might do it the power's already up so let's see what happens when we start tinkering with the gamma does the bump get stronger does it look more like it oh, it looks maybe a bit more like it there's uh, oh there's an invert option here so if it's the wrong side out so yeah it looks like we're there with the material on that so that's promising so uh, what I'm going to look at next what I'm going to challenge myself with for the next uh, video uh, lighting or water lighting or water okay let's uh, the water that's going to be tricky the material on this was tricky the water's going to trick at least though now I seem to have got a solution that's going to work with the lattices and it'll work with the trains as well so that's that's one thing it's nice to make a bit of progress every now and again and uh, I'll call that the end of the video and uh, I hope you didn't find that too boring. I won't say I hope you found it interesting because it did go on rather a long time. Sorry about that.